Hey, what is going on guys? So one of the most common questions I get asked about myself is what is my MBTI, Myers-Briggs personality type? I get this question all the time and today I thought I would just answer it by actually going through the most popular personality test on the internet, the 16personalities.com uh, test. If you Google personality test, I believe it is the first thing that comes up, personality test. Yes, first thing that comes up. So we're gonna take this test and I'm going to show you my score. And once we get whatever my type is, we'll look through the, some of the traits that that type contains and then compare it to some of the other traits out there because there are, it looks like 16 different personality types, each a combination of the four different letters here. Now, this is mainly based on the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator acronym here, but I believe that the 16 personalities test, looking through their theory page here, uses a little bit different philosophy behind their questions. And there's lots of different types of tests that use the MBTI acronyms. So it's important to realize that people who tell you, hey, I'm an IM, INFTP or um, ENTJ or an ENFJ, if they say that, they might have taken a different test than the one you take and it might mean something different altogether. The other thing that I wanna mention before I go into this is that personality tests in general, this one and others, are merely mental models that can be useful for figuring out what kind of personality you might have and what things you might be better at than others. But I don't think that you should use these to define yourself entirely. In fact, there's a really good quote from an article here on Quora uh, called, what is the current thinking about Myers-Briggs that I really liked here in this fourth paragraph, I think it is. Uh, in this sense, it can be a good framework for developing an intuition about one's own uniqueness and how one cannot use oneself as a model to explain all other human beings. That's why, or that's the one quote there that I really love. You can use these tests to remind yourself that the way that you view the world is not the way that other people view the world and things that work for you may not work for other people. But I don't want you to use these kind of tests to try to define yourself and especially limit the choices you make or make decisions about what you maybe shouldn't try to do because you fit into a certain personality archetype. So with all that being said, we are just going to get into the quiz here. You find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. Uh, no, <laughs> it has become much, much easier in recent years. And I think this actually highlights something right away. Um, if I were to take this test, in fact, I did take this very test about five years ago, I think this was more on the middle or agree side because I was a little bit more shy and now it's not hard at all. You try to respond to your emails as soon as possible and cannot stand a messy inbox. <laughs> oh boy. Can we use wishful thinking here as an answer? You have to answer honestly, even if you don't like the answer. Okay, I have seen friends of mine, I've seen their inboxes and I sometimes see like 10,000 unread emails in there. I am not nearly that bad. However, I am not super good at responding to emails very quickly. Let, let's, go with a, let's go with a soft degree because I do try to do it and I do not like a messy inbox. I'm just not good at it and I'm not one of those inbox zero practitioners. So I really don't think I could put myself over here on the strong agree. You feel superior to other people. I don't even know how to answer that. I, I definitely feel superior to other people in certain areas when I am very confident in my skill set. But in terms of just general, I mean, I, I don't know. I realize that it's very easy to compare yourself to a reference that you may have, but you may not have a reference somewhere else. So I really don't know. See, I feel like I feel like the type of work I do lends itself to the development of an ego that I try to keep in check. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that as neutral. I'm not really sure to be honest. Being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Ha, no, 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 not at all. I love being organized, absolutely, don't get me wrong, but I think the skill of adaptability is actually a lot more important than being organized. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. Now, this is an interesting question. I think five years ago, I would have put that, yes, winning a debate matters more because I was more interested in objective truth and finding the right answer. At this point, it, I think it depends because like with my relationship with my girlfriend, I often don't care if I went to a debate as many times as I may have used to because I don't want her to be upset. These are these are tough questions because of the context matters. And and I would I would rather be wrong than win on an argument that doesn't work. So this is this is kind of tough. Maybe putting aside the context of my relationship with my girlfriend on debates that don't matter. In general, I think that coming to the truth of the matter does matter more than making sure no one gets upset. Otherwise, that's avoidance of conflict for no reason. So we will go with a middle agree here. You don't mind being at the center of attention. 
Agree, I do not mind that. You consider yourself more practical than creative. I think that I'm more creative than practical. And I suppose my reasoning for this would be that I have a lot of friends who do YouTube and do entrepreneurial things. And a lot of, a lot of those friends are more willing to do things that they know are going to be profitable with less of an investment in the creative aspects. Whereas you guys know, I put out a video once a week, if that, because I'm so into making sure that my videos have something creative and new and different in them every single time. So I think I'm more creative than practical. We'll go with that one. People can rarely upset you. That is true. I don't really get upset almost ever. It is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings. I'm actually gonna go to disagree on this one. It's gonna be a soft disagree. When I took this test a few years ago, probably five years ago at this point, I know that I was over here on the agree side. I have had trouble in the past empathizing with other people's feelings because I'm a very solution-minded person. When there's a problem, at least in my mind, the first thing to do is to solve it. But I think this is another good example of how your personality can actually shift through conscious effort because I have worked to become more empathetic with my friends and with people in general. And I think that work has actually contributed to becoming more, uh, me becoming more naturally empathetic. So we're gonna go with it. Soft disagree there. In a discussion, truth should be more important than people's sensitivities. Oh, here, this is another one of those questions where I would have been like, hard yes, and I'm not sure, because context matters so much. How much does the truth matter? That's the real question to be answered here. So I think once again, I'm still on the side of agree, but it's, it's not as hard of an agree anymore. I, I try to think about the context now. Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. I'm gonna have to go back to that adaptability question. Dwight Eisenhower once said that planning is everything, but plans are nothing. And I absolutely agree with that. We often have to change plans quickly and pivot. So I think that being able to develop a plan is very important, but the most important part of every project, I think is adaptability and communication. So we'll go with disagree. If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start worrying if you said something wrong. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I know this is irrational. I know this is stupid because I have had people that I haven't responded to in weeks and it is no fault of their own. It's just my poor organization or, you know, prioritizing other, thing, other things. And I tell myself that every time I send an email and I don't get a response quickly, I tell myself they're just busy. They, you know, they're probably doing something else. Their email's not a priority, but there's always this little thing in the back of my mind that's like, you probably said something wrong or you probably worded something or you, you put a period on some sentence and made it sound too terse. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. You do not let other people influence your actions. I, on, I feel like if you, answer agree on this one you're a little bit self-delusional i think we all have influences even if they're subconscious i think you have to disagree a little bit so the question is to what degree i definitely let people influence my actions that's absolutely true i have discussions with people that i trust and people that i look up to and they often will change my opinion on something that i was going to do i do think that there is a certain degree of principle that I hold myself to, and there's a certain degree of confidence in my ability to judge where I am and what the best course of action is. So we'll go with a soft disagree here. Your emotions control you more than you control them. That is a disagree, absolutely. <laughs> I like to think I'm in control of my emotions quite a bit. Like I said, I don't really get angry very often. I don't let my mood swing that much. You would rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. There's the key question, rather, the key word here, rather. Would I rather improvise or spend time coming up with a detailed plan? I like doing both, to be honest. Um, I think that where a lot of my great work comes through improvisation, like I, I said here, I think my personality type actually leads me to try to plan things out in advance more, and then I just end up improvising within the constraints of that plan, if that makes any sense. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence. Yes, yes I do. Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. I'm gonna go with agree there. So I did say that I do try to take people's emotions into account more often now, but I still do believe that logic trumps my own emotions when it comes to making important decisions. Keeping your options open is more important than having a to-do list. Um, this all comes back to that improvisation thing, right? I'm gonna go with disagree here though, because I think that keeping your options open actually leads us to inaction many times when we just, we have too many options, we have no constraints to really put us down a specific path. I think when we create constraints, we actually give ourselves the freedom to operate and make more impactful decisions within those constraints. So I like having a to-do list, 
and then being able to adapt it if I have to. If your friend is sad about something, you are more likely to offer, emo offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. So this is one of those things, five years ago, I would have been hard disagree. I have worked very hard to make myself give emotional support, but my gut answer, the thing my brain immediately jumps to whenever a friend has a problem is to suggest a way to deal with it. And then I have to like pause, stop myself and decide to purposely give that emotional support first and wait so that to suggest a solution until they ask. All right, you rarely feel insecure. Agree, I am not an insecure person. <laughs> you think that everyone's views should be respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not. Disagree. Your right to express your view, I respect that uh, with certain exceptions, but the view itself does not deserve respect if it is not supported by facts. All right, you feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. I actually don't. I have an introvert battery that drains when I am in a group of people, so. <laughs> you feel very anxious in stressful situations. Definitely disagree here. When I'm in a stressful situation, I actually feel very energized. Stress is a very good thing for me, at least if it's not chronic. You often take initiative in social situations. Yes, I do, and this is something that has served me very well. Uh, again, this when I had taken this test a few years ago, the answer was probably no. I wasn't the person to plan things. I wasn't the person to to be the leader in that in that area of my life. But now I've learned that you kind of have to be if you want things to happen. So I do try to do that. All right, so we are about to get the results and I actually do not know what I'm going to get. Uh, so let's just click it and see. All right, ENTJ. Okay, so that is what I got last time. And there's a dash A on there. So we'll see what that actually means. I'm not exactly sure what the A means here, but let's go through it. All right, so 83% extroverted. That is a big difference from what I would have gotten five years ago. I think last time I got ENTJ, but I was like 52% extroverted. Uh, let's see here, I have 56% intuitive energy versus observant. Um, my nature is more thinking than feeling, but again, my thinking nature was actually much higher in the past, so it has balanced out over time. Tactics, this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision-making. I'm more judging than prospecting, so we'll see what that means. And then identity, uh, this trait underpins all others, showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. I'm 87% assertive and 13% turbulent. So let's see what all this stuff means. All right, the ENTJ personality type. And keep in mind guys, there are 16 different kinds. So it looks like I am here, the commander within the analysts category, but we also have diplomats, sentinels and explorers. So we have a Steve Jobs quote, that's pretty cool. Commanders are natural born leaders. People with this personality type embody the gifts of charisma and confidence and project authority in a way that draws crowds together behind a common goal. However, commanders are also characterized by an often ruthless level of rationality using their drive, determination, and sharp minds to achieve whatever end they've set for themselves. Perhaps it is best that they make up only 3% of the population. Oh, pretty rare, I guess. Lest they overwhelm the more timid and sensitive personality types that make up much of the rest of the world. We have commanders to thank for many of the businesses and institutions we take for granted every day. I'm interested in the strengths and weaknesses. Let's look at that real quick. So commanders are efficient, they're energetic, self-confident, strong-willed, strategic thinkers, and charismatic and inspiring. Uh, let's hear commander weaknesses. I'm actually more interested in these because I feel like these are interesting, but they often are like ego stroking a little bit maybe. So I wanna see what my weaknesses are here. Stubborn and dominant. Sometimes all this confidence and willpower can go too far and commanders are all too capable of digging in their heels, trying to win every single debate and pushing their vision and theirs alone. This was absolutely me for a long time. In fact, in high school, I had a I had a girl break up with me actually for this very reason. It's because I basically refused to give ground on arguments. I would like let my logical mind just go too far and just kind of run amok without thinking about the other person's feelings. And that kind of broke that relationship up. So I've learned to not let that part of me dominate my thinking. Intolerant, it's my way or the highway. Okay, so people with the commander personality type are notoriously unsupportive of any idea that distracts from their primary goals and even more so of ideas based on emotional considerations. I think this is something that I also struggled with in the past, but it's another thing that I've tried to work on. All right, impatient. Some people need more time to think than others. An intolerable delay to quick thinking commanders. They may misinterpret contemplation as stupidity or disinterest in their haste. I definitely have this problem. I have noticed it in many different instances where I have made my decision very quickly. And when somebody else doesn't make their decision, it kind of annoys me. So it's important to realize these things, I think. Arrogant commander personalities respect quick thoughts and firm convictions, their own qualities, and look down on those who don't match up. Okay, so that's something I have to work out with. 
poor handling of emotions. All this bluster alongside the assumed supremacy of rationalism makes commanders distant from their own emotional expression and sometimes downright scornful of others. And lastly, cold and ruthless. Their obsession with efficiency and unwavering belief in the merits of rationalism, especially professionally, makes commanders incredibly insensitive and pursuing their goals, dismissing personal circumstances, sensitivities, and preferences as irrational and irrelevant. You know, I'm reading the Steve Jobs biography right now, or I'm listening to it on Audible, and this is like him to a T, absolutely. This is a good indication of why these tests are not always completely accurate. So I look at these and I see some of these weaknesses in myself, but this cold and ruthless one, I actually don't think this describes me at all. Because I, I work with a team of nine people at this point. And whenever they have a personal circumstance that makes it so their work is, you know, has to take a, a back seat to their personal life or they have to take some time off, like there is never even an initial thought in my head that, oh, they're in the way of my overall goal and vision. So again, these, these are not always completely accurate. Let's look at career paths. And obviously this video is going to get very long if we go through all of them, but I'm very curious about this one. It is in the world of careers that commanders' boldness and drive are truly at their best. No other personality type is better suited than commanders to be the respected leader of an organization or team, and no other personality type enjoys it quite so much. This is interesting to read now. I'm reading a book right now called Good to Great by Jim Collins, and uh, in that book he did a ton of research on companies that essentially went from like good or mediocre to having great results over a certain period of time. And what they found is that one of the common traits between all of these good to great companies is that they had a leader who was a little bit more quiet, a little more reserved, didn't have that bold, charismatic personality, they ended up making better long-term leaders because they were more willing to accept the harsh truth of all the environmental factors and threats facing the business. And they were less intimidating to their employees and they would take criticism and they would take ideas more seriously from their subordinates than somebody who maybe has a commander personality like this. So this is something that I have thought about and tried to keep front of mind in my own business. I do like being a leader, but I also realize that it's possible that this commander personality, which I think does describe me to a good degree, could be a weakness within my career and within the success of my business here. So there's all kinds of stuff on here. Um, but yeah, so I'm an ENTJ. Hopefully that answers the question for you guys. And I would be curious to see which personality type that you guys end up falling into. It's a pretty quick quiz. It's pretty fun to go through. So let me know down in the comments, which one of these you fall into. And I would be curious to know as you're going through these descriptions of your personality type and going through these different exploration, parenthood, friendships, romantic relationships, what do you think this test gets right? And what do you think gets wrong? I would be interested for you to scrutinize the test itself against your own beliefs of who you are and see if it actually is accurate and all those dimensions. One thing that I do want to mention before I go, um, if you are like me, you are probably always looking for new YouTube channels and new things to sink your teeth into and learn new stuff. I know I'm like that. I'm discovering new channels all the time. And because of that, I thought that I should start sharing some of those channels on this channel, maybe like once a month or something, just to share what I'm watching with you guys. So I wanna share a channel called Wisecrack. I got to hang out with these guys at VidCon. They are freaking awesome and they do all kinds of videos on their channel, but I think that the main overarching theme is that they combine science and philosophy and all kinds of educational content with books and movies and video games and all kinds of stuff that we are probably usually more interested in than all the academic stuff. So they make education fun in a way that I really, really quick uh, click with. And I've actually been watching Wisecrack for a really long time because they started with a series called Thug Notes, which does literary analysis of tons of different books. And I absolutely love it, but they have tons of other videos as well, including a really cool recent video on the philosophy of Death Note, which is one of my favorite uh, anime, as well as a Thug Notes on Ready Player One, which is one of my favorite recent fiction books. So I'll have a couple of their videos linked up in the end card here, as well as in the description down below. Definitely go check them out and subscribe if you like their stuff. If you have channels that I haven't found yet that you think I should check out, also leave those in the comments down below. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in next week's video.